light the beam, because it's time for Nerdy for 30, the podcast where we talk about nerdy-ish movies and TV shows for 30-ish minutes. My name is Kevin Bauer. People call me the critic's choice. With me, as always, is the people's champ, Tim Kak. If you feel it, chase it, baby. <laughs> if you feel it, chase it. Our own Tyler Owens yes. back on the beat, because today we are talking about The Boys Season 4. Tim, what did you think of this one, man? Dude, I loved it. It's awesome. I I did a whole rewatch of the show and Really? Yeah. And it's it's great. I mean, the whole thing's cool. It's neat to see how intentional everything is, how good the writing is. I'm thinking season 2, there's all kind of builds up to Butcher making a promise to Becca to take care of her son. And the way they build up to this moment, which is in like the second to last episode or last episode, is by giving us background on Butcher the whole time. They're talking about his relationship with his brother, all of this stuff, so that by the time we get to this last episode where he has to make the promise and she says, you have to swear on your brother and he does it, you feel that. Every time we get Butcher making a promise or anytime somebody lies in this, or even tells the truth, it feels like all of those things are weighty decisions. They're complicated. They matter. It's also superheroes, which is fun. It's very political. I think the show's, I think it got a lot of heat now for being too political, but the show has always been ridiculous political. Um, I think they take shots at both sides to the extent that I think the main villain in this is capitalism and corporations and greed and Mm -hmm. selfishness and fucked up people fucking over other people because they were fucked up uh and just victims hurting victims still truly hilarious that this is one of the most anti-capitalist shows that i've ever seen and it's an amazon prime show it's just it will never not be ironic (laughs) it's crazy they're rattling off these big corporations like apple exxon and just skipping over amazon (laughs) like that's that's crazy amazon's right up there with the group but There is a lot of omission of Amazon, a lot of shots at Disney, which are funny, a lot of shots at other people. And it's it's Amazon, though. Like, it's it's crazy. I feel like in the context of the show, though, it would definitely Amazon itself would be some kind of a variation of Vought. It would be like a Vought two day shipping or something like it's so clearly, clearly under the purview of everything that Vought does that like, yeah, the, the in-universe Amazon is definitely some sort of a some sort of Vought production. It's a Vought imp- imp- uh, enterprise. It's all Vought. It's interesting how even if there are things that you really care about, any cause you care about or religious stuff or any beliefs you have, there is someone out there who will try and manipulate that to manipulate you. Someone yeah. will try and take advantage of that. Doesn't matter how good your intentions are. There are people out there who will try and take advantage of it for for money most of the time. So I think that's the main crux of it. And don't necessarily find this uh, offensive. I think, to be fair, it really lines up with my politics a lot. Uh, all the whatever stuff. I don't think we need to get into that. I don't think politics is really why people listen to this show. Uh, <laughs> but I do like the combination of f the man but also they're saying fuck like it's a crass it's brutal it's bloody it's gross they are it's uncensored and also like pretty tolerant uh and woke ideas i think for lack of a better word yeah in a way it's the same thing that we've talked about with the x-men franchise right being a sugar pill where it's like these ideas about civil rights that are being slipped into this thing that otherwise would be very shallow just superhero entertainment it's like suddenly you give it that undercurrent of an oppressed people that's fighting for equal rights and it's a mutant and it's a character that largely in the x-men comics they have characters that are very easy to empathize with and so it's the kind of thing where if a bigoted person were to read it, it could be one of the first steps that kind of causes that person to realize, wait a minute, what if I had empathy? Uh, And I feel like The Boys is top-notch satire that is sugar-pilled inside a really trashy show, which is great. It's like... (laughs) It's like a weird variation because all the X-Men stuff, you know, it's still it's still pretty polished. It's still pretty clean. Yeah, we got an R-rated Logan, but nothing in Logan is half as bad 
is anything you could find in literally any episode of The Boys or a Boys-related spinoff. Like, that I think is part of the reason that this had this weird... People apparently had a shock revelation that, like, Homelander is Trump. And Yeah. Uh, it's like, I, I feel like there is a pretty big overlap with people that just seek out, like, violent action entertainment and don't like to have any kind of a message in it with people who would seek out this show because of its violent action entertainment and not necessarily expect that there's going to be anything deeper there. So I I wonder, obviously there was like an outcry from like far right people online about this one, but I also wonder the extent to which it may have actually kind of caused people to think twice. We will never know the answer to that, but it's like one of those things where, uh, if you there's a psychological principle behind this again psychology not the reason people listen to this pod but there's a psychological <laughs> principle behind the fact that if you come at somebody with something that is directly counter to their beliefs whether or not it's logical and sound and rational they're going to get up in arms about it because it's something that it actually activates the part of your brain that feels like you're being physically attacked people just clinch up before they even realize what's happening so I think it's why things like this can be kind of important in a way that people don't like to acknowledge because it's the boys, but it can be important if this is the thing that moves the needle and again, gets people to think a little bit more empathetically. And with that, I will get off my soapbox and stay off for the rest of this podcast. <laughs> I, I agree. I think I also feel like it's not as biased. I don't think it's necessarily picking a side other than corporations are wrong greed is wrong and yeah. everyone is trying to fuck us over yeah that no one at the top has our best interests in mind there's uh you know uh conservative candidates there's liberal candidates they're all pieces of shit they're all killing people they're all doing sketchy stuff there's tons of bad people in this there are different movements that are good or bad and they're all shown to be manipulative and corrupt and it seems like it's a shot at everybody so um, I think in that regard, I, I think anyone could watch this and be offended by any part of it. And I think also by that logic, I don't think anyone should be as offended by this as some people are because it's a, they're going out. It's everybody. Everyone is sure. under attack from this. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I thought maybe for this pod, in, instead of doing beefs or thieves, or maybe we could work those in. We could just go down, go through the list of the cast, go through the characters and just give our t hot takes on each one because the cast for this is huge. They're complicated. They're fun. They all have their own unique arcs. They're all have good moments. They all have bad moments. They're all good people, bad people, pieces of shit one moment and doing the right thing the next. So I think maybe we could rapid fire, go through some of these and uh, give our takes, Kev. Please. Um, this sounds great. Let's do it. So. We'll start with the big dogs. Butcher. Butcher has had such an interesting arc, and I would argue he's the main character of this show. Uh, mm -hmm. Or maybe Huey is the main character, but Butcher is the straw that stirs the drink, I think, for a lot of people. And his hatred and his conflict drive so much of this. I really like the stuff going on with Joe Kessler and the Joe Kessler reveal that this is Butler as Butcher getting sick and seeing people that aren't there and seeing his wife and having all of these conflicted feelings and the, the duality, I guess, of his wife representing his good intentions and Joe Kessler representing his bad. And then him ultimately deciding to go with Joe Kessler is so interesting, so complicated, and maybe the main driving force in this in this show uh what do you think of butcher is he is he a top tier character have you thought uh has he gotten better or worse as the show goes on oh my god yeah he's a top tier character this dude is fucking iconic i he's he's incredible i think better as time's gone on um that joe kessler reveal was wild that was honestly so cool. that like one two punch if she's not here neither is he was sick it was so cool um the super so like the so he has like cancer cells like he has basically a tumor that is super powered right so like that thing is weird i don't hate it 
It's pretty weird, but it's something I've never seen before. So I got to respect that. But I do think that there was something that was like, there was something that was really fun in a way in the previous season when he had the temp V that he was using to have superpowers. Yeah. Because it's like, it's kind of the inversion of what we saw in Captain America and the Winter Soldier, where they made the conscious choice with Sam not to have him take the superpower formula same thing with baron zemo like of course he wouldn't take it it's against everything he stands for in this i like that he makes the black hat choice he's like fuck it this is gonna help me kill homeland or i gotta do it and so it's fun to see somebody have powers that make him a legitimate threat so i'm a little bit bummed that he can't control these super powered cancer cells in the same way but you know it's still cool i'm curious about his powers and the nature of his powers right because he took V and that gave him or the temp V and that gave him these superpowers, but then resulted in these tumors and growths that are going to kill him. Right. Yeah. But then he took regular V. Uh, and he says he did. And he would have gotten powers from that. So the tumors, it seems like would have just killed him, but now he has powers. I'm wondering if he actually has the tumor still or not, or if he's actually this sick, or if this is Joe Kessler or his powers manipulating him into doing this, we see him with a rabbit, right? And the rabbit escapes. And then later he sees the rabbit and sees the tumor thing crawl out of it. Uh No one else is there to see the tumor crawl out of it. He's the only one who sees it. He's been seeing Becca and Kessler the whole time. But he's already possible? dying at that point. He's dying. Right. So my theory that I'm throwing out there is that he took the V and something about the V is pretending to kill him so it can take over or the tumor. It's because it seems like he's healthy at the very end. He's yeah. healthy as the thing ripping out of his chest. So I imagine there's a way where Butcher walks out of this either without the tumor or the tumor doesn't affect him. Like he has a superpower. Now there is a superpower in him and he has a connection with it and something else is going on. And I'm wondering if the tentacle thing, I get the rabbit seeing the rabbit basically implies that everyone who does temp V long enough will get a magical tumor. Yeah. Right. So he sees that. What if that's not there? And the only reason he has a magical tumor is because he took V, like the real thing. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm with (laughs) you, but I I think it's a good idea. I could be wrong, but it's weird that there aren't... I guess we'll know if we see more tentacle people, or if there's more things with tentacles. (laughs) And it's interesting that he chose Joe Kessler... And he seems like he chose Joe Kessler because Ryan Butcher, I guess his name's Ryan Butcher. I don't know what his last name is. He I is was wondering that too. Yeah, his son. He's on like Wikipedia is Ryan Butcher. Um, what do you think of Ryan? Because I think they're playing him pretty well. He's like kind of a bratty kid who knows what the right thing is. But he also just murdered at least two people. That's <laughs> right. He is, he's a straight up killer. And he murders the woman who was an aunt to him. And maybe if you're a kid and you have superpowers and you can't control it, maybe that just happens. But I also find it hard to believe that that's an actual heel turn from Ryan. I think it could just be a kid who's like confused and figuring stuff out. Yeah, man, it'd be so much easier if the people that he killed were like in some way implicated with bad Vought stuff. But the fact that it's people who were functionally innocent is it's nasty. It makes it. A little bit strange. I'm wondering if they're basically going to have in the final season to face down three generations of Homelander with Soldier Boy and Homelander and Ryan, because I could see the show saying, you know, Butcher, he the over the overall arc of the show is that Butcher is going to go from wanting to destroy all soups to realizing that uh, basically his son is one. And now he's going to help show this son the way to a better world. but. That feels a little too optimistic for the like level-headed view of the world that this show has. I could see it instead going with power corrupts absolutely, and so Ryan is just as corrupt as everybody else. 
or going with something more nuanced for a finale where like, you know, maybe Ryan isn't Ryan's not all good or all bad. He exists somewhere in the middle and it's just how life works. Yeah, you can murder people and just come back from that and be chill. I mean, that's kind of what the show's doing. They're flip flopping with everybody, it seems like. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Ryan's really interesting. I, I am craving the three generations, though, and Soldier Boy being on the time. The three of them all teaming up is going to be so cool. I I do think Ryan at one point will do the, the right thing, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Dude, Soldier Boy coming back up. If we can do Soldier Boy next, it's something for me that's like, it's like it's both my beef and my thief because from the beef side it feels kind of cheap it feels like just putting in it feels like when the golden state warriors drafted uh kevin durant it's like i mean sure like of course that's going to be a threat he's he's a massive talent we all know this guy's reputation we've got a history with this guy so it feels a little cheap that they didn't find another way to kind of ratchet up the stakes that's new that we haven't seen before but he's got to be the thief, too, because fucking hell, man, I just want more Soldier Boy. Like, Soldier Boy was the absolute pinnacle of season three. Like, just the most entertaining thing on screen at all times. And the thought that he wasn't going to come back was brutal. So I'm still happy to see him. I, any way we get Soldier Boy, I'm here for it. Jansen ankles or ankles? I, I don't ankles. know. <laughs> Ankle, ankles. Jensen's ankles, ankles are incredible, and I want to see more of them. Yeah, same. He's, He's the man. Soldier Boy is the man. And I would love to see the three of them doing their thing together. Um, one of my critiques listening back to our season three app was feeling real bored of Huey and Annie. And I was not bored of them this season. <laughs> I thought they did a great job with them. I think I've made this comment about other stuff before, but it's nice to see situations where the relationship is not at stake. Yes. This season, they decided you and Annie, they're together. They love each other. This is a, a reasonably healthy relationship. So Huey is going to go off and interact with characters. We don't normally see his dad. We're going to introduce meet his mom. And uh, Annie is going to stay here and work with the team that she really hasn't worked with before. And mm -hmm. she's got this whole arc with her powers. They're both going on internal journeys and changing like that. As opposed to, oh my gosh, are we going to break up? Whatever. They, at the very end, when he, I mean, the most effed up thing that happens to Huey is he's sleeping with this, uh, chain, this like mutant changer, this, uh, what you do they call that's the most effed up thing that happened to Huey this season? I think it's one of the most effed up thing. Okay. The second, <laughs> the two most effed up things are him, you know, being taken advantage of with the shapeshifter. I think maybe the most fucked up thing that happened this season is Huey's mom giving Simon Pegg the V without talking to Huey. You think that's the most effed up thing that happened this season? I think that's, well, We're I'm just going to skirt think it, past the dungeon with, with Huey. Oh, well, that was funny. The dungeon I, was unbelievably dungeon fucked. That is the worst <laughs> thing the show has ever depicted on screen. <laughs> like by <laughs> far, absolutely bar none. <laughs> That was horrifying. My jaw was on the ground. <laughs> it was horrifying. I, I am. I, I do agree. It was horrifying and messed up and him getting tickled and like sat on is very weird. I think. I thought it was so such an absolute betrayal by his mom to do that to his dad. Like Huey had the V in his pocket. He was going to make the decision. He made the decision not to do it. And his mom's like, oh, I thought you were going to do it. You dropped it. So I assumed that meant you were going to give it to him. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? This is also a woman who has not been in his life this entire time. I was wondering the whole time if she's really a bad guy. Is this mm. malicious? Why is she? Why is she giving her husband a drug that somebody dropped in front of her? That's crazy it's insane behavior it's truly insane behavior and ultimately we realize the wrong choice because he becomes this veed up monster who doesn't know what's going on oh, and also what's the deal with so people hard. going crazy now with the v is it does it have something to do with age is that why they're giving it all to the kids because the older you get the like you mentally can't handle it and I you go think crazy so. i feel like that was explained in the third season too or in early season i feel like they they made some kind of a mention about the fact that they 
we're giving it to babies because their bodies could handle it better. Yeah. And yeah, what'd you think of the uh but the dungeon really got you? That was the craziest thing. Oh my god. Him the I Jesus. He, that guy drawing the circles on with a sharpie. I mean, it was like it's the most horrifying thing I can possibly imagine. And then Oh, shortly after that, that like, was crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. so fucked up. It He's was gonna cut holes in him and fuck them. Well, That's it's the crazy. Same. It's That's the same insane. thing with it's the same thing with uh like how like frankly the movie seven is so much scarier to me than any like demon horror movie I'm ever gonna see. Same thing with like the movie Zodiac. There's a death scene in the movie Zodiac that's based on real events, and therefore it's the scariest thing I've ever seen. Cause it's legit horror movie scary and it really happened to people so like this kind of like plausible stuff is seriously so much more freaky than the idea that somebody could like run through me at super speed <laughs> like <laughs> yes oh, god so yeah that was like i i was so stoked when what's his name tech Knight, which is just a dumb name i was so stoked when tech Knight got taken out and i guess the guy the other person that he had chained up i guess that was like the boys universe version of robin which is also super <laughs> fucked just god what a what it's a really good show it's so funny that he's like the batman analogy and it's just all this this bondage <laughs> torture and that robin doesn't want to leave he's just happy to hang out there they're not he's not trying to they're not trying to like unzip robin and bring them with him with them he's just down to hang out and you know, they're taking the old guys taking care of him or choking him, choking him out. And then his sidekick wants them to transfer all of his money out and just just down for the ride, I guess. You know, man, uh, the uh, I mean, it's it's all there in the subtext with the Batcave and everything. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it's like I'm shocked I haven't seen a take like that before on Batman. What did you uh, think the, of uh, what did you think of Ashley's arc in this season? Well, she is also effed up and kind of the whole show she's been turned into this dom who loves hurting herself and other people and i think it's fun i think that's very fun it's she is also scared out of her mind and also i mean she's so linked to a train this time right where a train is kind of getting a, a face turn and he's kind of becoming a good guy and doing the right thing and huey forgives him and it kind of feels like a train is actually turning things around in a Mm -hmm. real way. And Ashley, I think is also a pretty terrible person. And maybe she hasn't killed anyone herself, but she has been complicit, complicit and enabling of all the bad stuff that's happened in this. Mm -hmm. And she's been truly awful to anyone beneath her, which is fascinating. She is, it's crazy to watch Homelander abuse her and then her turn around and abuse anyone she can yeah and to just be so mean to a train and a train to be like listen you're nothing i don't respect you anymore is is wild uh her people i don't know are you rooting for ashley or against ashley no yeah this is not like when they show you deidre in the show Andor, and like at first i was kind of rooting for her and then like the torture scene happens and you're like what the fuck um i i don't think i've ever really been rooting for ashley she's kind of one of those characters that you love to hate and yes. like, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's great that the show does so much with her because I do think that she plays this really fascinating swing role, like you mentioned, where she is so low status in some scenes and then she turns it around and she's so high status <laughs> because that is so real in a corporate power ladder. I mean, oh my God, not to the same extent, obviously, but this kind of behavior that I've personally seen in the corporate world, it's like, it's, it's real as hell, dude. It's it's also perpetuated by all this stuff. I mean, Homelander just has these crazy mood swings like that where it just takes people out. Uh, Are you rooting for a train now? I mean, it's going to be hard to. I did notice that they didn't have him participate in the murder at the beginning of the season, which was like that should have been the first flag of where this was going to go. Because I was like, there's three people that died and there's three soups in the room. It must he must have contributed to. But no, I think Black Noir kills two of them and then the deep kills one of them. Um, I feel it when I did such a good job in like that scene where he's talking to his nephews and then the scene where he transports him over to the hospital and then that kid sees him and it's like, 
Man, I, they did such a good job of depicting this guy who's known for being a hero, but is anything but heroic. And then he does the first thing that lives up to the way that the world sees him. And he actually gets to like revel in the feeling that the world already has about him for the first time. And it's like, there's no way he's going to get a truly happy ending, but I think he's probably going to be fighting alongside their side in the final season. He's such a good example of, I think they do it well with, with every character. There's obviously the good guys and the quote unquote bad guys. It seems like, but Mm -hmm. everyone is hateable. Everyone does bad stuff. Everyone is also good. Even all the good guys are doing questionable things or struggling with something. And I, it, it's kind of crazy. I don't think I really empathize. I, I think I empathize for all of the quote unquote bad guys. Even Homelander is doing all this terrible stuff. And you see where he was raised. You see how he was brought up. You see yeah, what his yeah. childhood was like. And it's possible to hate this character and want them to be, to be murdered and also have empathy for them. Yeah. And the idea of a train who I think in the first couple seasons, maybe on our, our last podcast, I said was the biggest villain in the show. There's something so weak and spineless about him. And he, he betrays his family and his own values. And he's just like a, a weak human being. And to see him in this season, really turn around. It's very cool. It's very cool that in certain scenes, they want me to be rooting for a train and I'm and a train is doing the quote unquote right things. It's it's very fun. It's very fun to root for bad guys and it's fun to root against good guys. It's yeah. just it's just awesome. It it kind of goes into that thing where it's an explanation but not an excuse. We know the explanation for why these people behave the way they did, which allows us to empathize with them in their position. It's not an excuse for the bad stuff they did, but it at the very least helps us to know why they did what they did. Um yeah. Also, I just want to call out that the Will Ferrell cameo is so unbelievably funny. So funny. So crazy. When he says slinging yayo, I was laughing so (laughs) fucking hard. He's just revising his character from that Kevin Hart movie he did. Yeah. Like stomp the whatever the yard or whatever it was. Oh, man. Was it it get hard? I think it was get hard. Get hard. Yeah. (laughs) I do think this this show in general does a great job. I think this is a good good writing tip in general but this show tortures every character in it yeah it it truly everyone is miserable in this. (laughs) nobody has what they want everyone is going through a hard time and it makes it so compelling to watch that even the worst people here are struggling and having problems and it just makes them so much more complex and I don't know why more shows don't do this. It seems like a like a great exercise in general is like, how can we make our characters miserable today and see them overcome it? And how can we challenge them at the very least? Um, yeah, man. I think one of my other criticisms on the last pod was the deep and how I was just completely over the deep. And I think that's also turned around for me. I really dig this new bloodthirsty demanding respect deep. And especially because he is still a spineless wimp. Oh, yeah. This is Jordan Peterson deep. (laughs) This is like, what's the dude's name? Andrew Tate. This is like Andrew Tate stand deep. Yes. Uh, Willing to be violent and take out his rage on other people, but also a complete coward. Yeah. And he kills his octopus lover. But they have this scene where he is putting his head in his hands and dealing with the trauma and then she's still alive so he like like he really wants as a character he really wants the moment where he can pretend to grieve and process this yeah like he is he is trying to manufacture fake grief and it is being interrupted by her continuing to live and that's such an insane thing to do it's so such crazy behavior Ugh. but it's It's juicy, man. It's very interesting. It was wild. Like, yeah, getting to watch somebody narrativize, narrativize, narrativize in real time. I desperately wanted that scene to end. It was making me so uncomfortable. It was so (laughs) heart rending. Rent. God damn. I keep mixing metaphors. So heart wrenching. And uh, oh, my God, man. Man. So fucked up. 
what did you think of I guess we got new characters this season, Sage and Firecracker, mm-hmm. who I thought were both awesome in very different ways. Yeah. I love the idea of a superhero who's just insanely smart oh, coming in so and manipulating cool. everybody. It's it's so true. And just all this stuff happening. And then at the end of the kind of like Ocean's Eleven reveal, oh, it actually all went according to plan is, is so funny. And just that her her whole thing is I'm just doing this to see if I can and not seeing anyone as real human beings or emotional creatures other than using that to manipulate them. Mm -hmm. Gosh, Sage is so cool. She's awesome. I'm, I'm into it. I'm digging it. I thought the actor was great too. Yeah, she was great. Character was great. All the ads she's got, she's got the boys trifecta where like she's got the awesome powers. She's got the awesome way that she exists in the world and relates to the other characters. I want to see how deep it goes. Like I want to see how far back she's been influencing events to set everything up for what she wants. Um, She's played by somebody with incredible range. Somebody who is like blessing this show with great acting. And she's got a super fucked up detail about her. The whole thing where she gets the lobotomy and then she wants to eat junk food and hook up is so Ugh. fucked. And it's so like, it feels, it's the kind of thing that's so on brand with the show that it feels like it's been a part of it since the very beginning. I couldn't believe, I had the thought of like, oh, what was Sage doing in the third season? She feels like she's been a part of the show for so long. She fits in so well. It's fucking awesome. The lobotomy is so crazy because it seems like she has no other superpowers. Yeah. She is just really smart. So she is lobotomizing herself with no anesthesia or anything. She's just putting a metal rod past her eyeball. And I'm sure she's done the calculus and figured out the right way to do this. She gets shot in the head and she doesn't heal. Just her brain grows back. So she is just taking very real damage in this. And it's so it's just so fascinating and so good. And the idea that you have to lobotomize yourself to get away from yourself is so, so crazy. Nuts. Um, and firecracker too to your point i thought firecracker was phenomenal her backstory with annie was amazing it was amazing yes. adds a little bit more gray area into the space of the heroes and villains and how radicalized she's become by the world but then also the fact that she is in a position where she's taking advantage of people that just want to hear something that's going to make them feel safe and so she's decided she's going to be the person that puts that out there it's like it's so real Yes, she herself is kind of radicalized, but I think even more so she wants to radicalize people for her own gain. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So she's perpetuating this thing that it seems like she does believe it. I mean, the whole like uh, uh, like breastfeeding thing with Homelander is is crazy and all the medications for that. Oh. I thought for sure she was going to have the uh, virus or the whatever it was in her. Cause she's like coughing at the table next to Homelander. I'm like, man, is she sick? Did they infect her? Is this how Homelander gets poisoned or whatever it is? Uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Uh, she's not as powerful as everybody else. They had that huge brawl in the office that I thought was pretty cool where, uh, they they have to fight the deep and, and noir. And there's a moment when, noir, when deep is just lying there and they're, I think this was kind of dropped a bit after the first season. But how hard it is to kill soups, mm-hmm. how you need to find a unique way to, to kill, kill each of them. It really feels like they've dropped that and have just been able to kill a lot of soups through different methods. Yeah. But wouldn't the suppository bomb work on everyone? I think so. I think for the most part, because it seems like everybody is still basically about as normally durable as a person. It's just a matter of like their ability to regenerate something like a bullet hole. Right. So, so like, you got the deep lying there. Shove a bomb up his ass. How is that not the first thing? I was kind of shocked. I'm like, well, this is he's a good character. I do want to keep him around. But I would just have just bomb suppositories all covering my body. And just any time a soup dies, just just ram one in there. You know, <laughs> like like if that if that's all it takes to kill. I bet that would kill all of the soups. I bet that's how they defeat Homelander in the end. Bomb suppository. It's, yeah, wouldn't that wouldn't that work on every who is that not working on? I don't know. It seems like he's especially strong. Like there I we haven't seen him take a bullet hole or anything, right? 
No, he hasn't taken bullets. I think that kind of tracks as like an Aquaman character because he's he's the deep. He's under the ocean. Mm-hmm. He should be one of the strongest characters in this show. Yeah, the sheer we haven't pressure. seen it too, too much. Um, Man. Yeah, I don't know. This is great. It's going to be brutal. It's like, what, like two years until the next one comes out? Just fucking sucks. It's such a long wait. <sighs> I think we're getting a Gen uh, V in between. Okay, that'll be nice. And Gen V is good. If you haven't watched Gen V and you're listening to this podcast, check it out. It's worthy. It's awesome. Gen V is good. The Gen V cameos were cool. Yeah, I could use more of that. I can't wait for the next season. Same here. This world is awesome. Oh, I'm all in on man. it. So. Listener, yeah. what did you think? Do you agree? Do you have takes on characters we didn't talk about? We didn't really talk about oh my god so many people but write in let us know who we didn't cover uh, and let us know what you think about it we'll read it on the mailbag episode we'll be back here again next week till then stay nerdy everybody bye stay nerdy bye